all the men put together. They loved her. And she built a tent, or got a tent, that would seat 20,000 people. She had made her way to California at the same time Dowie showed up. Everybody still here? You still enjoying this? And the two met. Now, in Mother Edder's meeting, she was unique too. Short woman, wild services. She was called the evangelist of trans evangelism because she'd be preaching and stay like this for an hour and then come back where she left off and didn't know she was gone for an hour. One time she was gone for two days. Not, no joke. No joke, no joke. Not lying, not, not being Pentecostal, exaggerating at all. Just as it is. And there was a man that came in her tent while she was there. I'll tell you this story. And he kept making fun of her throwing things at her and cutting the ropes of the tent where the flaps would fall down on the people. He had to stop the service, go put the rope back up and start all over again. And he'd go around on the other side and cut some more ropes and curse at her because they, they thought she was a false prophet and a mean woman. So finally, I don't know if it was the Lord or just her or a combo. She hauled off and gave him a prophecy. If you do it again, God's going to get you. That was the prophecy. Now, I don't know if it was a faith confession that she was hoping would come to pass or was it a real word so he thought she was a nut anyway so he came back the next time begin the same routine he says i warned you tonight tonight you get it now god has always done strange things have you read the bible i mean you don't need to do anything new outside the word there's enough weird stuff in it but you don't have to create anything new i mean falling down is one thing but you've read about Daniel where God set him up. I like to start a prayer line where everybody lays down first and as anointing comes on, y'all pop up. That'd be a great prayer line. But that's in the Bible. See, you haven't read that part yet, have you? How about the part where the axe head started swimming from the bottom of the lake? Mm -hmm. You don't have to create anything new. Just believe for an axe head to swim and you'll be TBN's new star. That's the way it is. So this unique thing happened. While he was home sleeping, his tongue began to swell up like a small banana and hung out his mouth. Swell up and hung out his mouth. And he ran to the doctor when he woke up with his tongue and he couldn't close his mouth because his tongue's hanging out his mouth. And it's all big and thick like a banana hanging out. He runs to the doctor thinking that he has some type of allergic reaction that can't find nothing. Then after he does all the exhaustive things he can do to find out what's wrong with him, he realizes it's that woman. She cursed me. She put some type of hex on me. So he goes back to the meeting. This time, going, oh, yes, 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 yes. She goes, I told you. I told you. I told you. Now suffer with it. And she wouldn't pray for him for the first date. She said, you cut my tent down too many times. You need to suffer a while. So... She let him suffer for another 24 hours with a tongue. <laughs> he can't talk, he can't drink, he can't eat. His tongue is swelled up in his mouth and hanging out over his bottom lip. He comes back the next night. <laughs> she goes, I have a question. He goes, eh, I can't talk. You can nod your head, can't you? He goes, now I'll only pray for you if you repent for what you've done to these people. And repent for your sins and ask Christ into your heart. <laughs> you know, when your tongue's hanging out, you want to be a convert soon. First <laughs> tongue's hanging out, and finally, he calls out to God and says he's sorry. He calls out to God from a sincere heart and asks God to save him. And when he does that, she slaps him. I don't know what it is with early timers. They slap everybody. They're punching, slapping, and kicking. She hauls off and slaps his tongue. Bam! And it deflates shoom, into a normal tongue. And he, she, he actually became a pastor for Amy McPherson later in his life there in Los Angeles. So the swelling tongue banana man becomes a pastor. So there's hope for you. Mother Edder journeys a little bit further. She has all nine gifts of the Spirit in her ministry before the greatest of the street outpouring. But there was a man in Houston, Texas who was sick as a little boy. He was so sick, they said he could hold his hand up to a candlelight and count all the bones in his hand. He was that frail and sick. 
He heard about Dowie's. Dowie eventually moved to Chicago and built a great city called Zion. He prayed for Abraham Lincoln's niece, Buffalo Bill. He had all the people. Even the president came by to spend three days with him. He became the, the apostle of healing, as we called him. This little boy was a Methodist. He was ordained at 13. Got sick and was going to die. He was sitting under a tree in Kansas. And he asked God to please have mercy on him. And God healed him. And then he wanted to take healing power to other people, but he didn't know how to do it. But he heard about Dowie, so he traveled to Chicago to see Dowie. Dowie at this time has built a city with over 20,000 citizens in it called Zion, Illinois, that is still there today. He goes and watches and learns. And he goes back to Kansas and starts a school. A school. He put a little ad in the newspaper. All those who want to come and study the Bible and put all your money in one big pot to help us all out, come. And about 60 or so students showed up. And so one time, he told his students, now I'm going to Topeka to hold a crusade for New Year's. I'll be back New Year's night, and when I come back, I, I want to have a service with you. But while I'm gone, I want you to study the book of Acts and find out about how people received the Holy Spirit. That was the assignment. So he goes on to have his city crusade for a few days. He comes back to his school, and all of his students are stuck in the prayer room praying for this Holy Ghost thing. He stops the praying going, I didn't say have a prayer meeting until I got home. But what are you folks are doing? And they said, Mr. Parham, um, we've read the book of Acts, and we've concluded ourselves that we, we need this speak in tongues thing because everybody in the Bible that gets the gift of the Holy Spirit speaks in tongues, and so none of us have him, and we want him. He goes, what? What? And a woman, a woman named Agnes, all kinds of funny names, Agnes the woman, <laughs> comes walking up to him and goes, lay your hands on me that I may receive the Holy Ghost. He goes, what? I'm not going to touch you. I don't even know what I'm praying for. He goes, I read in the Bible, when the leaders laid hands on people, they received the Holy Ghost. So now put your two hands on me and pray for me. And he was scared to say no to Agnes. So he took his two little white hands, laid them on him kind of hesitantly, and asked the Lord to fill Agnes with the Holy Spirit, whatever that was. Now. He took his hands off, and they all stepped back to see if she was going to explode or something. They didn't know what. We know what to expect, but they didn't know what to expect. This is the first time it's come like this since the day of Pentecost, since the outpouring of the early church. They took a step back, and they, they looked at her for a few moments, and everybody began to say, she began to glow. Thank God Agnes is glowing. She begins to glow. And all of a sudden, she begins to speak in some strange dialect and language. And halfway through her first utterances, she began to speak in perfect Chinese and could write it. She grabbed a piece of paper and began to write in one of the dialects of China, Chinese that God gave her that night. And they all freaked out. Ah, what's up? What do you mean? She spoke in tongues and Chinese. See, in those days, you got both. Today, you just get one. You want to know why you only get one? Because all the early of the God folks were embarrassed of the other one. And they wouldn't preach it. But in the beginning of the restoration of the Pentecostal movement, they preached, when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you'll get the heavenly language, and God will give you another language of the world that you're supposed to go to. And that's why Pentecost spread like wildfire throughout the world, because not just the fire that came on them, they had a belief that that other language, if it sounded Chinese or, or Latin or African, that's where they went. There's records of people after they received the Holy Ghost, bought a ticket to Africa, didn't know what nation or what tribe. They just got off the boat and started speaking in tongues. Someone said, hello. <laughs> then they realized, I'm following you home. I'm called to you and your people. And that's the way it spread. Now, I hope that kind of faith will be inside of some of you. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they begin to get filled with the Holy Ghost and the devil got mad. Ever heard of him? He's everywhere in the Bible. And all through church history, 
the great story of the Bible is the movement of God and the reaction of Lucifer and his demons. Well, he got met and found the man that owned the house where they were in and told the man, kick him out. So he came over one day and said, I'm tired of all of you crazy lunatics in my house. Move. Parham prophesied, if you make us do this, you'll never live a day in this house. He said, I still said move. Well, they moved. They moved to Texas. But as they were leaving, about three weeks later after they were gone, it burnt down to the ground. And to this day, 2007, there is nothing still on the spot. I guess God was still mad. He cursed it for a long time. They moved to Texas, a strange place, Texas. It's their own country in the middle of my country. They have an arrogance. Have you seen George Bush lately? They all act like that. They think they own the world. They walk a certain way. That's a Texan. They're not mean. That's just the way they are. And so they go to Texas, and Parham does parades down the street. He dress up like biblical characters and people on his ministry team, and they get a crowd and have a crusade. That's how they did it. And an African-American man came to the school because the nanny of Parham was on vacation in Indiana and found this man and said, you should come to this school in Texas because this school in Texas has primitive Christianity. And we go, what's well, primitive Christianity? It means the thing from the book of Acts, the way it was in the beginning. They called it primitive in those days, and it became apostolic. And uh, he said, really? He said, okay, I'll come. So he takes the train from Indiana to Texas, and they wouldn't let him in because he was the wrong color. If they'd let him in, Parham and the other students would have gone to jail. But they had a creative way of helping him. They left the window and the door open. And he would sit outside or in another classroom and listen and take notes. And then he would eat by himself, talk a little bit to the other students, but they couldn't interact. It was against the law of my country. Stupid law, but that's what it was then. And when school ended, he got a letter from a Nazarene woman pastor. Would you come and preach for us? We heard you're a very good speaker. We'd like for you to come. Well, he wanted to, but he had no money. Seems to be the second song most Christians sing, I have no money. Have you heard that lately yourself? Maybe you've sung it this morning. I have no money, oh Jesus, supply. That's why prosperity teaching is important. Thank you for the one amen on the side of the room. The rest of you are still voting on that. Prosperity is not where I get the money out of your pocket to make me rich. That's not what it is. Prosperity is how you work the laws of abundance for yourself. Just because some pastoral turkeys have misused those scriptures and abused some of you does not mean it's still not true. You can't let an extremist violate the truth of scripture. It doesn't matter who ripped you off. If you still do the word from the right heart, you'll be okay. I've been ripped off so many times I quit counting. If I would have, all the seeds I've sown for a double portion on it, I should be glowing in the dark all the time by now. And most of you should be going too. We have given so many double portion awnings. We should have quadrupled and have all kinds of awnings by now. We should have all kinds of awnings vibrating in this room tonight. But obviously it didn't work that way. But that's another sermon. Y'all still here? He goes to California. I told